Hi, and welcome to the Cleveland Museum of Natural History's Specimen Spotlight. I'm your host, Lee Hall, and today some very interesting things are sprouting up in the Department of Paleobotany and Paleoecology. Today we're here with Dr. Denise Su, who is the curator of Paleobotany and Paleoecology. Hi, Denise. Hi, Lee. Thanks for having us today. You're welcome. Glad to have you guys here. So this is really cool. You have some very interesting objects here before us. These specimens are really, uh, they look so different, but, but they're related. Yes, they are. Will you please take us through what exactly <laughs> this is here? So this is a cobalt. You might be wondering why it's held together by rubber bands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually found this cobalt not too long ago in the back of a cabinet. It was in, I don't know, about maybe 15, 20 pieces. And one of our volunteers put it back together and to hold it together, she put rubber bands around it for now. Now, it's not made out of coal. It's found in coal seams. Mm. And it's dated to uh, the Pennsylvanian, so what, 300 to 325 million years ago. And these are just pockets of the coal seam where the vegetation did not compress into coal. So this is really yep. So so these this is from those pockets, and so there's actually it doesn't look like much as you can see. It looks kind of looks like a just kind of a rock. Yeah, it's heavy too. It it's is really heavy. Really dense. It's filled with vegetation. Now cobalts are actually very fragile, and they tend to fall apart very quickly, as is the case with this mm. one. And once they start falling apart, there's really not much you can do about it. Um, but maybe about 25, 30 years ago, the previous curator of this collection, Shai Chitali, she actually encased them in wax. This, this here, this, this is here. wax. This is wax, so she encased them in wax. Okay, so there's a coal ball. There's a coal ball in here. In this wax. In this like wax, this and exactly. And so this wax actually has protected these coal balls. They kept the shape, so it didn't disintegrate like this one. Now, we mm. could take the rubber bands off and you can see what a disintegrated cobalt looks not like. Not do that. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to put better. it back together. Exactly. <laughs> but um, the, this wax jacket really just kept these cobalts pristine. Um, they didn't degrade. Uh, I, I know of cobalts in other collections where they didn't do this process and it, their cobalts basically look like this. Mm. And the information you're seeking isn't necessarily on the outside no. of the mass. No. It's actually all inside and you can see here this is actually a cut cobalt. So, um, so it's been sectioned, and this is what this one looks like on the inside. How do you cut them? Um, just with a rock saw. You cut these, so you cut them with yeah. a saw. Yep, yep. We melt the wax off first, and then we cut it with a saw. Yep. Um, really. And then, so you have the surface, and what you do then, you see this piece of acetate on here. You put acetate on top, and you etch it with acid, hmm. and then you peel the acetate off. And when you do that. Um, a single layer, cell layer basically, of the cobalt is adhered to the acetate. And this is what you end up with. This really Get thin out. peel. We call them peels, but very imaginative. That? Yes. That is fantastic. And so what what are we looking at here? All these circular structures. Yeah, so this is uh, the aerial roots of a plant called Saronius from the Pennsylvanian. Um, it's basically a giant fern tree. They can get up to about 100 feet. Wow. Yeah. And you know, these are not trees in the sense that we think of trees. They don't, they're not wood. This is the, the roots that they put down. Um, these area roots are actually the structure of the tree. And so this is, um, in this particular case, this peel, this cobalt only had the seronius roots, but we have other peels where you might have three or four different types of plants in there as well. So different coal balls will mm -hmm. contain different parts of the anatomy of a plant. Yep, that's right. And different species of plants too. And it is really, really neat. Um, you, know, you go from this that looks like nothing, but then when you actually look inside it, then you have so much information about what the environment was like in that particular area mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. It's unbelievable that you would be able to get microscopic details of plant anatomy out of a, a lump of of rock from a coal seam. Yeah. But that's why science is awesome, I guess. It is awesome. That's why paleobotany and paleoecology are awesome. That is true. I totally agree. Great. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having us today, and we will see you next time on Specimen Spotlight. <laughs>